Few places bring El Paso history alive, as does the Magafin home. First occupied in 1877 by Mexican-born Joseph Magafin and his wife, Octavia MacReal Magafin, the house was built on part of a 1,280-acre tract of land Joseph inherited from his father. The Magafins used this strategic parcel of land for farming and real estate, and it became the basis of their wealth, allowing Joseph to serve in many public offices. Shown in an 1886 bird's-eye view of El Paso, the Magafin home was located on the outskirts of El Paso and was surrounded by a large orchard of apples, apricots, peaches, and pears, watered by the El Paso Acequia, or canal. The family maintained a flourishing garden, providing the family with vegetables, and Octavia had a lovely garden of flowers. The Magafins built their home with adobe brick, a method that was common in El Paso prior to the coming of the railroads. Adobe brick was made from material at hand, using clay from the property and sand from the nearby riverbed. The sand and clay were mixed with straw and water, and then poured into large wooden molds to form bricks. Once dried in the sun and cured, the bricks were ready for construction. No foundation was poured. The adobe bricks were laid directly on the ground, then stacked to form exterior walls that are two to three feet thick at the base. Wood beams to support the adobe roof and planks for flooring were hauled by wagon from the Sacramento Mountains in New Mexico. The exterior walls are 16 feet in height. The original mud plaster surface was replaced with lime plaster in the late 1880s to make the walls more waterproof. This plaster was also scored with grooves to give the appearance of stone construction, and vibrant full paint finishes were added to the door and window woodwork. The home is one of the best examples of territorial style architecture found in the Southwest. The style was a frontier interpretation of the Greek Revival style and is characterized by adobe construction, wooden pediments over doors and windows, whitewashed walls, paneled doors with side lights and transoms, shutters, and interior rooms organized around a central hall. When the McGoffins moved into the home in 1877, it included the large hall and six rooms, four on the west and two on the east. A three-room outbuilding lay 40 feet south of the main house. Within a few years, as the family grew, seven more rooms were added, connecting the two buildings. In 1880, Joseph McGoffin began to sell off some of his land surrounding the homestead. He retained about 27 acres until a flood destroyed the El Paso Canal in 1897. Then he developed the McGoffin Homestead Addition retaining about five acres surrounding the family home. In the late 19th century, the surrounding neighborhood included many fine homes. By the 1920s, the neighborhood began to see the intrusion of commercial and industrial development, and later the construction of multifamily housing complexes. Even as the neighborhood changed dramatically, the McGoffin home remained a reminder of El Paso's rich history. It stands today as one of the oldest surviving adobe structures in the region. In 1965, local historians succeeded in getting the home declared a Texas historic landmark and in 1971 listed on the National Register of Historic Places. Its preservation was assured in 1976 when the city of El Paso and the state of Texas jointly purchased the home from the McGoffin heirs. In 1985, the city of El Paso created the McGoffin Historic District in an effort to revitalize the neighborhood and preserve its historic structures. Under state ownership, the McGoffin home has undergone several extensive restorations. Managed by the Texas Historical Commission since 2007, the site continues to preserve and interpret a rich multicultural heritage. It remains as a unique architectural and historical treasure and includes many of the furnishings and decorative arts used and enjoyed by four generations of the McGoffin family. It is El Paso's history at its best.